Hi everybody, it's Crystal. I'm going to show you how to make this. I got a couple tails that I still This beret, um, it's real easy. It's a puff stitch beret. Now if you want to use a different kind of yarn than I do, like say one that's not quite so wooly, maybe a one that breathes a little better like cotton or something, you can. Um, the type of yarn you use doesn't really matter, but, but it's pretty easy. So let's go and get started on it. For this project, the yarn I'm using is, this is James C. Brett. It's a, a, kind of a chunky yarn. Um, it's 100% acrylic. Now you don't have to use this yarn if you don't want to. You can use any other type of yarn that you have, like a four ply or something, will work fine. Um, this was actually a gift from a subscriber, so I just want to say thank you to, to Jeanette. Your donation is greatly appreciated for this. Thank you. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a 6 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, you want to start off with the slip knot on your hook. And then I'm going to start with a chain of 4. And then I'm going to slip stitch into my first stitch to form a ring. like that. Now I'm going to be working puff stitches through the ring. So I'm going to start with a chain one. And I'm going to start my first puff stitch. What I'm going to do is yarn over, go in through the, the ring and drop a loop. I'm going to yarn over again, go through the ring, drop a loop. And I'm going to do it one more time. So that was a total of three times of yarning over and going into the ring. And then you should have a total of seven loops on your hook. And then you want to yarn over and go through all seven loops. And chain one to lock. Okay. Now I'm going to make another puff stitch. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to do go in, drop a loop. That's one time. Yarn over go in, drop a loop, that's two times, yarn over, go in, drop a loop, three times, seven loops on your hook, yarn over and go through all the loops, and then chain one, like that. Again, yarn over, go in, drop a loop, that's two times, three times, Yarn over and go through all, chain one. So I got three puff stitches. I want to get a total of eight puff stitches for my uh, first round. So I'm going to go again. Seven loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all, chain one. And you can slide them over as you go. Six. Seven. And that's eight. And chain one after that last one. And then what you want to do is slip stitch right here into the side of this one and that will close that round off now you can pull your tail and it'll close up that center circle pull it pretty tight should close it up not quite all the way but pretty good you can always sew it shut more later okay now we're going to work the next round we want to go over here in this chain one space in between the puff stitches so i'm going to slip stitch over to it so I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the next puff stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch right over into that chain one space. And that's where I'm going to start my next round. 
Now this time around I'm going to put two of these puff stitches in each stitch around. So I'm going to start by chaining one and I'm going to go ahead and do my puff stitch right here in this chain one space. Like that, chain one, go back and do another one. Chain one, jump over here to the next, in between the next two, and do two more. Yarn over, go right in. Chain one, go in the same spot, do another one. And then chain one, so you got two in that one. Now we're going to jump over to the neck, in between the next two. Put two in it. Chain one, go back into the same spot, do another one. Chain one, jump over to the next, in between the next ones, put two more. So I'm just going to repeat this all the way around, putting two puff stitches in each of the chain one spaces between these puff stitches. And you want to do that all the way back around to the beginning. Okay, once you make it all the way around, you should have a total of 16 puff stitches now. And after your last one, I put two in this one, you want to chain one. And then come over here to the side of your first puff stitch here and slip stitch. Just kind of in one of these little stitches. I know it's kind of hard to see, but just kind of slip stitch right there. Now what we're going to do is slip stitch right over to this chain one space in between them. So slip stitch right here into the top of this puff stitch. And then you should be able to slip stitch right over into the chain one space. Like that. Okay, we're going to start off by chaining one. Okay, in this space right here, we're going to put two puff stitches. So we're going to yarn over and go ahead and put two puff stitches in it. And chain one in between them. So that's two puff stitches, chain one. Now the next chain one space, which is actually right here in between, we're just going to put one puff stitch. So go right through that space. And just put one puff stitch. That chain one. Now right here, in between these two puff stitches, we're gonna put two puff stitches in that spot. And in the next spot, right here in between, we put one puff stitch. Right here the neck in between the next two, we put two puff stitches. And then the next spot we put one. So we're just going to repeat this all the way around. Just like that until we get back to the beginning. Okay, once you make it to the end, you should end in a spot where there's just one puff stitch. So now again, we're just going to slip stitch kind of right here in the side of this puff stitch. Make sure you chain one after this one so you lock that puff stitch up. And again, we're just going to slip stitch right over to in between these two puff stitches. So it should be one slip stitch into the top of the next puff stitch. And then one slip stitch will take. Okay, once you are slip stitched into this spot, we'll start with a chain one. And we'll start by putting two of the puff stitches into this spot.
chain one and now we're going to jump over to this spot and we're going to put one puff stitch chain one the next spot right here is going to get one puff stitch And then the next spot you can see is going to get two puff stitches. So that's the pattern this time around. There's going to be two puff stitches right here and then one puff stitch in this spot one puff stitch in this spot and then two puff stitches one puff stitch one sp puff stitch two one puff one puff two all the way back around to the beginning okay once you make it back around I'm going to go ahead and kind of just slip stitch into the side of this next puff stitch like that and then we'll slip stitch right over here to the next, just like before, to the next chain one spot. So one slip stitch on top of that puff stitch and then one slip stitch over to the spot. Okay, you can kind of see a pattern that I'm doing now. I think you'll be able to see it now. Wherever I, there was two puff stitches from the previous row, that's where I'm going to put two puff stitches again. So I'm going to chain one to always, to always chain one to start. So right here I'm in a spot where there was two puff stitches so again I'm gonna put I'm gonna start out by putting two puff stitches in it like that and then every spot in between where there wasn't two puff stitches like here here it's just gonna get one puff stitch and every row is going to add one more single puff stitch. So like right down here on this, this row, we had two puff stitches and then one puff stitch, two puff stitches and then one. And then this last row we had two puff stitches, one puff stitch, one puff stitch, two puff stitches. Now this row we're going to have three single puff stitches in a row in between the doubles. So go ahead and I'm going to put one puff stitch into the next spot. And then I'm going to go to the next spot and it's going to be one puff stitch. And then the next spot again will be one puff stitch. And now I'm at a spot where there was two puff, puff stitches in the previous row. So I'm going to go ahead and put two puff stitches in that spot. Like that. And then I'm going to do one single puff stitch, one single puff stitch, one single puff stitch. And then right here it will be two. So that's the pattern I'm going to be working all the way around until I get back to the beginning it's one two so that was three single puff stitches in a row and then the next stitch will get two puff stitches. So you just want to repeat this all the way back to the beginning. Okay, once you make it back around again, again, like always, we're going to slip stitch into the side of this puff stitch. Like that. And then we need to slip stitch over to this spot. Okay, start again by chaining one and we'll start with two puff stitches into the first spot. I'm 
like that. And now this time it'll be four single puff stitches in a row. One in each one of these spots. And then when we get to here where there was two before, we'll put two again. What we're doing by doing this is we're gradually increasing the circle while keeping it flat at the same time. Because you want to make sure it stays flat. And then it'll be two into this stitch. So that's the pattern now again, really easy. Just want to repeat it all the way back around to the beginning. Okay, I went ahead and slip stitch into the side of this puff stitch. And again, I need to slip stitch right over to this spot, just like before. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to do any more increases. We're just going to be doing one puff stitch in every single stitch around. So we just chain one. And it just gets one puff stitch. What this does, it, it keeps it, now it's not going to get any wider. The side, now the sides will start coming down now that, that, now that you stopped increasing. It'll start to go downward, like fold down like a hat. If I was to keep increasing, it would just keep getting larger. So it's just one puff stitch in every single stitch all the way around. No more increasing. And I'm actually going to do a couple rows of just one puff stitch in every stitch. I'm not quite sure how many I'm going to do, a few, but I'm just going to keep going around putting one puff stitch in every stitch and when I get back to the beginning I'll just start the same slip stitch over and then I'm going to do another row of one puff stitch in every stitch around and I'm going to keep doing that and I'll let you know here in just a second how many rows I do I do of the of just the one in every stitch okay I went ahead and did four rows of just one puff stitch in every stitch and I know it looks kind of big and funny but hopefully it'll look like that when I'm done hopefully I'm just kind of winging it, winging it so <laughs> okay but now what we want to do is we I slip stitch into the side of this puff stitch as as usual now I'm going to start right now by chaining one now I'm going to go along and I'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch so I'm going to go into the top of this puff, puff stitch and single crochet and then in this space it's right through it single crochet top of this puff stitch single crochet and then in the space top of the puff stitch in the space and I'm going to do this all the way around Okay, I made it all the way around after that row of one single crochet in every stitch. Now you're probably going to want a stitch marker here because we're going to be working on the, the brim of the hat and I'm going to be working it in rounds of single crochet. So, I'm just going to use a piece of yarn, maybe, I dropped it, there, to mark my spot. So, I'm right here at my last, my beginning stitch, so I'm just going to put my stitch marker here. Now I'm going to do a row of single crochet decreases and what I'm going to do is five single crochets in a row and then a single crochet decrease and I'm going to do that all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to my first single crochet and single crochet in it. So that counts as one. I'm going to do five in a row. One, two, three, four and five and now I'm going to do a single crochet decrease 
So I'm going to go into the next stitch, drop a loop, and then go in the next stitch again, drop a loop, yarn over, and go through all three loops on my hook. That's a single crochet decrease. That took two stitches and made it into one. So what this is doing is kind of making it a little bit smaller now. So I'm going to try to make it fit the head better because as you can tell it's pretty big now. So now I'm going to do five single crochets in a row. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to do a single crochet decrease. Go on the next stitch, drop a loop. The next stitch, drop a loop. Yarn over and go through all three loops. Just like that. Five single crochets in a row. One, two, three, four, five, and then a decrease. like that. So I'm just going to repeat that pattern all the way back around to my stitch marker. Okay, I'm coming around to the beginning and I just did a decrease and as you can see, now you may not, it doesn't matter if you have this exact same number of stitches at the end, it's not going to matter. But as you can see, I don't have enough to complete a, a complete row. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish it out with single crochets. Now I'm going to move my stitch marker up and I'm going to do the exact same thing one more time. I'm going to do five single crochets in a row and then a single crochet decrease. So what I'm doing is just jump over the first one and there we go. I'm just repeating the last round. So that's one, two, three, four, and five and then my decrease. Just like that. And then again. One, two, three, four, five, and then my decrease. So just repeat this all the way back around again. Okay, after that last round of decreases, what you want to do is just do one row of one single crochet in every stitch. So just one time around, putting one single crochet in every stitch, no decreasing this time. So all the way around, one single in every stitch until you get back to your stitch marker. Okay, after you make it all the way around, with that just one row of one single crochet in every stitch, move up your stitch marker. Now I'm going to do one more row of decreases. This will be the last row. And again, it's going to be five single crochets in a row and then a single crochet decrease. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then the decrease. Like that. One, two, three, four, five, and then the decrease. And if you want to try the hat on before this row decreases and you think it fits tight enough for you, you won't have to do this last row decreases. But I thought it was a little loose still. So I'm just decreasing one more time. So just repeat this all the way around. This will be the last row of decreases. Five single crochets in a row and then a single crochet decrease all the way back around. Finish it out until you get to your stitch marker. Okay, I made it back around after that row of decreases, and again, I'm going to move my stitch marker up. Now I'm just going to be doing rounds of one single crochet in every stitch until I get my rim as long as I want. So, I'm going to continue going around. One single crochet in every stitch, and I'm going to do a few rounds, and I'm not quite sure how many rounds I'm going to do, but I'm going to get started, and I'll let you know in just a second how many total rounds I do of the one single crochet in every stitch. Okay, I went ahead and did four rows of just one single crochet in every stitch, but you can always do more or less depending on how uh, tall you want this brim part. But once you make it back around to your stitch marker, we're going to end it 
here, maybe, came undone. Okay. When you get back to your stitch marker, you can move it and take it out because you ain't going to need it anymore. Okay, you want to go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch. And I always slip stitch one more time just to kind of even out the round. And then you can tie this off, clip your yarn, and hide the tail. Okay, and that's it. That's all there is to it. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I hope you were able to follow along okay. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And you can always come and check me out on Facebook. And if you make this or anything else, you can post a picture. I'd really like to see it. And until next time, have a good day.